In 21st century technology, there's hardly any arena Elon Musk hasn't touched. Cars, solar power, batteries, broadband internet, robots, cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, and even the most difficult things, rockets. In less than 20 years, Musk has taken SpaceX from a startup to the world's premier launch company. But that's not enough for this self-taught engineer who became the richest person in the world. SpaceX's Falcon 9 has made rocket reusability a cost-saving reality with its dramatic return-to-launch site booster landings. But Falcon is only partly reusable and therefore not Mars-worthy. In an interview with Mars Society President Robert Zerbin, Musk said that if the goal is sending lots of people in cargo to other planets, so you can't be faffing around with these expandable rockets. They're a joke. They're, they're absurd. Even Saturn V is tiny potatoes. To settle Mars, he'll need a vehicle that's fully reusable, reliable, and rapid, as in able to fly daily without a lot of expensive and time-consuming maintenance. Also, able to lift 150 tons to orbit. Huge. And that's what Starship Super Heavy is designed to be. Elon Musk shows off SpaceX's first Starship Super Heavy booster March 18, 2021, and at the time he said that Booster 1 is a production pathfinder, figuring out how to build and transport 70-meter tall stage. Booster 2 will fly. The wishes are good, but the reality is a little harsh. Almost two years after its debut, the Super Heavy prototype has still been sleeping in Texas, Happily, this is going to change as SpaceX has now begun preparation to make the historic mark and is set to launch the most powerful rocket next month. Elon Musk giant super heavy will definitely leave the world behind. Find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Measuring around 69 meters from tip to tail, Super Heavy is almost as tall as an entire two-stage Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy rocket. At 9 meters wide, a single Super Heavy booster, effectively a giant steel tube, should be able to store at least 6 or 7 times as much propellant as Falcon 9 and about 2 to 3 times as much as Falcon Heavy. Engine count and peak thrust are similarly staggering. To an extent, Super Heavy is even simpler than the smaller Starship upper stage, which needs two types of Raptor engines, flaps, a bevy of maneuvering thrusters, and more. However, at the booster's base, SpaceX must design, fabricate, and assemble a nightmarishly crowded and complex mechanical structure capable of mounting, fueling, and powering anywhere from Raptor engines. Simultaneously, that structure and all associated plumbing must withstand the force and pressure of more than 2,000 metric tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and the 7,500 tons of thrust that those Raptors can generate. That's just the bare minimum, though. Beyond the extraordinary mechanical stress it must withstand, Super Heavy's thrust section also needs to be able to survive the hellish, violent environment created by almost three dozen powerful rocket engines on one side while the structure is effectively half-submerged in cryogenic fluid, subjecting the puck and dome to brutal thermal condition. Last but certainly not least, the exterior of Super Heavy's thrust structure must be able to survive the mechanical and thermal hell of hypersonic atmospheric reentry with zero cushioning of the blow. Including smaller secondary runs for each Raptor engine, Super Heavy's engine section will likely contain miles of plumbing for highly flammable, explosive, and high-pressure liquid and gaseous methane and oxygen. All 33 Raptors also need to be connected to Super Heavy's power supplies and avionics systems, demanding still more miles of wiring. Another reason the rocket looks like something from a 1950s science fiction movie is that it's made of a shiny stainless steel. Originally, it was to be made of carbon fiber, but that technology was taking too long to develop, said Elon Musk. So SpaceX switched to steel, a decision Rasky calls brilliant. Rockets like the Falcon 9 and Atlas V are made of aluminum because it's lightweight. By the time you add on enough thermal protection to keep aluminum from melting, you've erased some of that metal advantage. Steel can take more heat, and it's far cheaper. Indeed, if SpaceX can produce and launch its Starship Super Heavy in volume, getting the manufacturing system right is harder than the engine design, says Musk, and truly deliver on the three R's. Rapid, reusable, reliable. 
SpaceX will completely transform the space business. Even if the ambitious 2 million per launch target is off by an order of magnitude, hauling 150 tons to orbit every day enables projects that has never been possible. So far, the SpaceX Super Heavy is clearly not flying, but what it has achieved is not to be underestimated. Last month, the rocket survived a record-breaking engine test, potentially the most powerful static fire in the history of rocketry. Booster 7 ultimately ignited 31 of its 33 Raptors. To partially counteract the thrust of the Raptor engines, the rocket's tanks were filled with some 3,000 tons at 6.6 .6 million pounds of liquid oxygen and methane propellant. Despite losing two Raptors, SpaceX still broke the all-time record for the number of rocket engines ignited simultaneously. That record was held by the Soviet N-1 rocket, which launched four times with 30 NK-15 engines in the late 60s and early 70s. None of its test flights were successful, but N-1 still set the record for the most thrust produced by a single rocket, generating up to 4,500 tons or 9.9 .9 million pounds of foot thrust at liftoff. Neither SpaceX nor CEO Elon Musk has confirmed it, reducing the odds that Super Heavy Booster 7 broke that historic thrust record. But it certainly could have. Each Raptor 2 engine can generate up to 230 tons or 507,000 foot-pounds of thrust at sea level. Raptors theoretically designed to throttle as low as 40 percent or 92 tons, around 200,000 foot-pounds of thrust. With 33 engines operating nominally at their minimum throttle setting, Super Heavy would have produced 3,036 tons or 6.7 million foot-pounds of thrust during today's static fire. Not a record. For 31 Raptors to break in one's thrust record, the average throttle setting would have to have been around 64% or higher, far from unreasonable. From a data gathering perspective, a full thrust static fire would be the most valuable 33 engine test SpaceX could attempt, but it would also be the riskiest and most stressful for the rocket and pad. Former SpaceX executive Tom Mueller says that SpaceX broke N1's record. Mueller is effectively the father of the Raptor engine and likely still gets information straight from SpaceX engineers he used to work with. Still, one would expect SpaceX itself to proudly confirm as much if a rocket it built became the most powerful in history. Whether or not Starship did become the most powerful rocket in history, it's likely become the most powerful rocket ever tested on the ground. The first stage of Saturn V produced around 3,400 tons or 7.5 million foot-pounds, and that was during its first sea-level static fire in 1965. Likely contributing to its failure, N1's booster was never static fired. Other powerful rockets like the Space Shuttle and SLS use or used a combination of solid rocket boosters and liquid engines that can't be tested together on the ground. Unless SpaceX's goal was a minimum throttle static fire, Starship's 31 Raptor static fire likely beat Saturn V's record to become the most powerful ground test in the history of rocketry. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.